Hello, I am Elian Rahib. I am the director of uh, Miguel's Ward. Uh, I am now in the snow <laughs> because uh, I really, it was a very, very difficult process uh, to finish this film on time for the Berlinale. Uh, we had a total lockdown and I was uh, with the mask for hours. So now I am breathing uh, fresh air when my film is showing. During my film, I am now, you know, uh, breathing fresh air. Uh, the film uh, Mikkel's War is about uh, love, about war, about uh, family, about uh, uh, a catharsis, about uh, accepting yourself and your roots and uh, uh, talk about very, very intimate things and exposing them uh, in a way that also makes the other people who are hearing it reflect uh, about the complexity of life. Did you like someone? The Bionic Man, the Majors. I hope I'm going to sleep with him before I understand that I'm going to sleep with him. I'm going to sleep with him. I'm going to sleep with him. كنت البراءة بحد ذاتها عن جد كنت انغرم بكل شيء في رجال قوية فينا نطلب منك تفلوت شعرك؟ طبعا شمال يما يمين على الملتان وهوب <تصفيق> Yes, <laughs> Hello, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean Bord Bobak, and this time we're going to discuss the film Miguel's War with director Elian Raheb. Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. Um, it's very lovely to have you here. It's a real pleasure. Um, okay, so let's let's talk about uh, Miguel's War. Let's talk about the film. Um, how did you meet Miguel, and uh, how did you decide to collaborate and to and to make this movie? Yes, uh, I met Miguel in Barcelona. It was a pure coincidence uh, because uh, he was uh, the interpreter that uh, did the translation after one of my films. And um, after the film, uh, uh, I felt that he was a bit tense because uh, it was a film about... Uh, the civil war in Lebanon. So yeah. I felt that this translator interpreter is a bit tense. Um, I was wondering why he was like a bit emotional and I felt that he was uh, somehow uh, uh, suffocating. <laughs> yeah. So we went after to a bar. Uh, uh, he, uh, I, I asked him why, uh, I, and I noticed that at, at a certain point he went out of the film. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I was outside the theater, so I pushed him inside. I told him, you are the interpreter, you should see all the films. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, after I told him, why did you, why did you go out and uh, what happened and why are you emotional? And uh, so he vomited on me his story. Okay. For uh, maybe, he talked, for, he talked maybe for two hours uh, oh, without wow. uh, interrupting. Yeah. And then the second day, the second day, I uh, I told him I want to meet you again because I was not be believing what I was uh, hearing. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, we met, and uh, I was traveling the same day, and he continued for maybe another three hours, uh, talking okay. and talking and talking. Mm. Yeah. And the, I was not able to write because I didn't have like. Uh, my tools to write, so yeah. uh, I, I recorded in my head, you know, like uh, everything that I was hearing. Mm -hmm. And on my way back to Beirut, I uh, I remember I wrote 
uh, everything he told me for yeah. for four hours i was writing without without interruption my wow. hand was shaking and uh, <laughs> i didn't eat and uh, I was very, like, really concentrated on, on writing everything I heard. And then when I uh, went back to Beirut, I uh, started reflecting on this uh, extraordinary story I, sure. of Miguel. And I said, I said, well, this is a story for a film. Um, and I went back to Barcelona after maybe one month. And then yes. I recorded with him on, on audio. Maybe nine hours of 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 uh, confessions, of stories, of uh, like I I felt that he was uh, wanted to liberate himself through through talking. Yes, and yeah. uh, through having somebody who will really hear what he's saying, mm -hmm. and uh, like re, um, like uh, somebody from his culture, because yeah. he had been really away uh, exiled in Spain since. Uh, uh, 1985. Yeah. So he didn't meet a lot of Lebanese people who would really interact with his story. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, so uh, uh, I, I'm sure he, he said things to Spanish people, to Sren Maria or whatever. Right. But to have somebody from your background hearing you and not judging you, because of course I didn't judge him at all uh, yeah. about what he uh, said to me. I think it was uh, like for him very helpful. Certainly. Um, certainly. And then I, uh, uh, after these nine hours of interviews, uh, audio interviews, I told him, well, I think I'm, I want to make a film about you. Yeah. And he was not believing. He said, why? What? Okay, so we are back uh, uh, with Elian and we are discussing further Miguel's war. Oh. Unfortunately, we had a. We had an unexpected technical difficulty, which is part of these online interviews. Um, but yes, so we are back um, and let's continue. Um, you mentioned that uh, it was a, a difficult, it was a, a very interesting process for Miguel to talk to you, who is like coming from the same culture. Um, can you tell us very briefly about the, the civil war in Lebanon, which is uh, the backdrop of this film? This is very complicated. The civil war just briefly uh, uh, started in 1975 and ended in 1990. So it's 15 years. Yeah, it's a very long time. It, it started by uh, briefly like uh, uh, the right wing uh, parties that were uh, in the state um, fighting against Palestinians uh, who were uh, refugees in Lebanon, but also they were armed. And uh, the Palestinians were uh, backed up by the communist parties and the leftist parties of Lebanon. Uh, it started like this, but then, especially after 1982, be, it be uh, we had an Israeli invasion, also, mm -hmm. yeah. and we had uh, a Syrian occupation as well from both sides of the country. Um, because we have a border with Palestine uh, uh, and we have a border with Syria. Yeah. So we had uh, both borders also uh, having uh, military troops coming to Lebanon. Yeah. And uh, after it, it, ha it, it, it became very sectarian, like everybody fighting everybody. It was not only the right wing against the, the, the left wing or the Palestinians, it was also... Druze against Maronites, and then uh, Shia against Maronites, and then Shia against each other, and then yeah. Sunnah, and then you know, it's very, very complicated yes. uh, civil war. And uh, it ended in 1990 in a big, uh, let's say, um, a consensus mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, to uh, to let the Syrian uh, presence be like. Uh, uh, all over Lebanon, and uh, we would uh, have uh, so their own, their sovereignty on us yeah. for some years, so that uh, the militias uh, end and uh, finish. And uh, but ne we never had a reconciliation. We never had a really like a, a accountant of the war. We we didn't have this. Yes. We had a, an amnesty that said, okay, now it's time to. Uh, 
to uh, to start again and uh, to build the country and uh, to have a normal life. But uh, of course, it was not possible because this is why we always have now crisis in Lebanon mm -hmm. because we never really had an end to all this uh, civil war and yeah. we still have the same parties that made the war. They decided to make the peace, but they still uh, are uh, very, very much corrupted and they are criminals and they killed a lot of people and uh, there are a lot of yeah. mass graves and a lot of disappeared people. So it's, it was just a, a fake peace, let's mm -hmm. say. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for that because it helps to <laughs> situate um, the story a bit. Formally speaking, the film operates on many different levels and you weave together many different formats. هلا عمرك هون 17 سنة 17 18 عم بحلم كيف بدي فد من لبنان بدي امشي وانسى لبنان وانسى بس ما عم تقدر تهرب هاي الحقيقة ايه انا اخترعت عالم لحالي عم بسمع كاسات شو؟ كاسات البكي لبيتوفن كنت مسجله هيك عدة مرات ورا بعض هيك بصير ببكي كثير What was the driving force behind uh, this aesthetic vision that comes through the film? Well, for me, Miguel, um, uh, why I decided to make a film about him, because we, we didn't say this, it was not only because his story was extraordinary, but it was also because uh, I saw in him a metaphor mm -hmm. of how uh, family, uh, religion, and uh, uh, fascism or nationalism can really uh, kill the identity of a person yeah. and kill the individuality of a person who is trying to assert himself. Yeah. Uh, 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 so, uh, and, and this is our problem as individuals in this part of uh, the world, is that uh, the, those three powers, family power and religious uh, institutions and the state, either it is a military state or it is a, a mafia state or it is a nationalist state, state they all rule, rule our lives. And uh, they, they, they all want you to be the same. Yeah. They all kill your uh, identity, your individuality. Uh, and uh, Miguel was a victim of all this when he was an adolescent. And uh, having him also as a gay, so his sexual identity was also very, very confusing for him because it did not at all meet the stereotype of uh, manhood mm. in, in, in Lebanon. Like uh, a f family wants a real brave man, the, the, the nationalistic, right. pe nationalistic people and the fascist people want, you know, the real brave man and the... Uh, the religious people want a man with virtues uh, who would go to the church or who would, you know, be very sure. yeah. religious. So um, he was uh, a victim of all this and he uh, went to do his own war in a battlefield, which was a complete failure for him. Yes. Um, so uh, this is why it, it interested me as, as a story, because it was a very, very complex story that uh, shows exactly 
our problem in this part of, of the world and yeah. maybe in other parts of the world, not like just Lebanon, but we really have it uh, combined, you know, these three mm -hmm. powers that really kill your identity yes. and make you hate yourself and make you feel so uh, inferior if you don't mm -hmm. meet mm -hmm. the standards, the standards yeah. and the mainstream uh, identity uh, tries to promote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, and, and because uh, Miguel was... Uh, <clears throat> For me, a very complex character uh, who, who, who had the, this uh, identity that was uh, denied for a moment and he had to live a double, a total double life. Yes. And when he went to Spain, he really became also the opposite of, of what he was in Lebanon. So it created uh, layers, layers in the character of Miguel mm -hmm. between his reality, between what he wished to be between his fantasies. Uh, yes. uh, so I felt that I wanted to be in his head and feel with him to tell this story 30 years after, you know, with all uh, the distance, with all the exile, with all the denial, with all the, uh, also what, ha what the truth or his understanding of that period. Yeah. I needed th these different formats to really feel in his head Mm -hmm. is fabricating and what he is not and uh, when you confront him to the real places or the real characters what would happen so i felt that i needed uh, this combination of uh, multi formats uh, hybrid formats yeah. to really try to tell tell this very complex story yeah. multi layered story yeah absolutely to be yeah. honest, I think to, to be honest with him, this is what I felt. I mean, because sure. also Miguel, when he tells you his story, you feel that uh, uh, emotionally he is stuck in Lebanon. Right. Uh, physically, he is in Spain. Uh, when he told me his story, he was in Spain. So physically, he lives in Spain. But emotionally, he's stuck with patterns. Right which he lived as traumas in Lebanon or did not understand them at that moment. Yeah. So I felt that this journey with him had to really try to uh, 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 show this confusion yes. and show this, uh, being, uh, this, this displacement when you are emotionally somewhere and physically somewhere else. Yeah. So this is why also the film jumps between Spain and Lebanon. You don't know where you are. Because, uh, I mean, he is sometimes like this, you are sometimes with him and he tells you something coming from the past, but you feel that he really lives it as if it's happening now with him. Certainly, yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's all very interesting and it kind of relates to questions of memory and honesty as well, which you very directly address in the film too. So can you tell us a bit about these aspects of the movie? Um, of course, uh, when you want to, 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 to tell a story that happened uh, 37 years ago, there's a lot of, uh, first of all, a memory which is not sometimes accurate. There is also the trauma that creates blocks for you to really remember something in a very accurate way. There is also uh, fantasy, because sometimes when you live a trauma, you have to in order to get over it, you sometimes create uh, another story just because you need it to survive. <clears throat> and uh, uh, there is also, of course, the denial of, of Lebanon, which uh, did not deal with his civil war. So this is why all these uh, layers of trauma, denial, memory, and fantasy uh, come together uh, and and uh, 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 the spectator has to fabricate also. Like, it's not yes. that we give him the truth. We don't give him the truth. We give him tools for him to uh, try to understand. There is no nothing right. called uh, truth. There is the truth of the moment. There is the truth of a crew filming this moment with uh, uh, Miguel being, uh, you know, emotionally in this moment something. So this is why I felt it, I had to expose uh, the process itself sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I had to expose the fragility 
of telling this story, the fragility of a filmmaker uh, 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 and a protagonist who became friends, but in the same time, who tried to manipulate each other because mm -hmm. uh, filmmaking filmmaking uh, is also manipulation. Uh, the clash that happens between us at a certain moment in the film, right. I had to expose all this because it was a part of the process of mm -hmm. this journey. So yeah. uh, for me, this journey is also has a, a living experience uh, yeah. between uh, this encounter between me and Miguel, which makes it unique. If it yeah. was another filmmaker making a film about him, it wouldn't have been the same. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and because because he is exposing a lot, Miguel is very brave in this film. He's telling very, very difficult and intimate story. Exactly. I, I, I felt, to be honest, to be honest with him, I had to expose also the filmmaking, all everything that was happening, uh, because it was part of of, of him telling mm -hmm. the story. Because when he would tell it to me in an intimate space with a recorder, it's yes. not the same when he's telling it to a of big course. crew. And of this course. is also what he what he realized, what he realized through the film that uh, it's it's a big deal. It's not like just me and him. Yeah. And uh, it uh, it it made him also tense at at at, at certain times and uh, not very comfortable. You know, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. when he would realize that there is a crew and that we are. We are appropriating his story, you know. Yeah. It's also like me now, you know, when, when the film is out, it's not anymore my film. It's, it's, it's the film with the audience reacting. Yeah, yeah. So I have this uh, 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 angoisse, as you say in French, this uh, fear, fear about uh, a film going out to a big audience and I would not control it anymore, you know. Yeah. So it's really when something is very personal and you want to expose it, it really becomes very big and you don't know what will happen. Exactly. So you, there is a fear uh, for this. Yeah. In a way, how you constructed this film and also um, through Miguel's story and through how you tell the story, um, a kind of queer history of Lebanon also shines through in the background of this whole thing. Um, was this a deliberate uh, thing that you wanted to do? Or was this something that really arise from your process of working together? Uh, no, I wanted to link him also to the context. Yeah. Like, uh, it's not a, mo a home movie. I'm doing a film about my friend and he is confessing to me. Yeah. Uh, for me, Miguel, as I said, is a metaphor. A lot of people like, uh, like him uh, are trapped in, 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 mm -hmm. in identities. Uh, uh, I, if, I, if I want to, to say uh, queer, I will say it in, a, uh, let's say, a wide, a wide uh, understanding sure. of, uh, of the queer. We can hear you. We unfortunately can't see you right now. And now you are back. And now you are gone again. <laughs> oh, it's going to come in. Um, okay yes okay yes okay we have you so, back yes yeah i was saying uh, I, I was saying that a uh, uh, lot of uh, people relate to miguel because uh, in the in the in the large sense of being queer uh it's being uh, unconventional in a country that wants you to be a conventional person yeah. Uh, uh, so I wanted to relate uh, Miguel always to the country to show that uh, he is part of that uh, narrative of that country and so that his own story, his own war uh, uh, is part of a big war. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, not the civil war only, but the war of loving yourself as a person and having a different identity and uh, being able to um, to come out after you know 37 years and say, well, I want to tell my roots. This is what yes. he said in the beginning. I want to tell my roots what they have done to me. You yes. know. Yeah. So uh, his roots is not only his family, but it's it's all the society. It's yeah. all the country. It's all the 
the, these three powers that kill your individuality uh, when you are different, when you are, you feel a minority all the time, you feel inferior, yeah. you feel you don't fit, you don't fit to the system, to all yes. the system. So this is why uh, the, the, the relation between Miguel and Lebanon in the film pumps up because I was trying to contextualize him mm -hmm. to yes. a, bigger, a, bigger, a bigger story. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, it's quite obvious by the end of the film that uh, probably this process that you made the movie together helped uh, Miguel to face a lot of this past trauma. Um, but I just kept on wondering to what extent did it work the same way for you as the person mostly behind the camera? Uh, uh, I repeat the, 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 the To, to the what question. extent uh, was it something, was, was this filming process something that helped you uh, working through some maybe past traumas? Because it obviously worked in that way for Miguel. Yes. Uh, um, in fact, it's a mirroring film, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, if you uh, remember also... Uh, in the end, there is one of the characters he like really identifies to yes. to, to to Miguel's uh, father, uh, and uh, he really like uh, you don't understand if he's talking about himself or about uh, the character. Yeah, and uh, 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 I I felt this all the time that he was uh, Miguel's story was mirroring uh, stories of uh, the queer people, in, but queer I'm saying in the large sense. Yes, of, uh, sure of the term, who do not fit in. So um, this is why uh, my one of my personal stories come out in the film. And uh, it, 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 it has look, uh, also, I think it gives some meaning because I am there in the film from the beginning. Yeah. And you don't understand a lot why this filmmaker is there, why they are clashing, why they are, why uh, is it like this? And then at the end, when you, see a story of mine also, you feel that, oh, okay, like it's also her personal story through yeah. Miguel. Uh, so, yeah, of course, it, uh, it, it, uh, I, every film is, has a part of uh, catharsis, if you want to say. Yeah. And uh, putting myself also in the film and being that much involved with, with Miguel and with what happened to him and with relation with parents, relation with the war, I felt that uh, naturally, it really came naturally, you yeah. know, this yeah. uh, putting my own parents in the film yes. became uh, a natural uh, process. Yeah. Um, but this also like it's, um, it's uh, uh, it, it, in all my films, I try to raise questions about yeah. uh, our, our uh, sociopolitical uh, reality or identity. Yeah. And um, uh, I think all, all my films are personal in that sense. Each film asks questions and try to answer to a certain um, uh, obsession I have or uh, questions mm -hmm. I want to understand. Uh, it's a film about life. Uh, right. Miguel's film is about life, about war, about love. And right. I think in that sense, I really relate I related to the film because I think every one of us, searches for the ultimate love yeah and uh, maybe he spends all his life searching for this love yeah. and sometimes he does not find it yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but he maybe uh, finds something else and i yes. feel that for example this this film uh, uh made yeah. my relation with miguel a very yeah. valuable one i really uh, think that uh, uh, we became very close because yeah of Yes, that, absolutely. That journey, yeah, and that really came through as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so great. Thank you very much. Uh, it was it was very lovely talking to you. Um, and yeah, I wish you all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Um, and hopefully we see each other in June in person as well. Yeah, and there won't be snow in June. <laughs> yes, that's or at least we hope there yes. won't be snow in June in Berlin. Yes, great. Thank you.